Hey everybody, today we're going to give you a sample of a free course we have available on our Payments Professor website. It's a free course that covers the different payment channels available in the United States. It's designed to educate everyone on what payment channels are and how they work. This particular episode, it's going to focus on wires. Enjoy! Hey everybody and welcome to the wires portion of the introduction to payment channels. Wires are also known as high value transfers and can also be referred to as real time gross settlement transfers. Wire transfers are generally used between businesses when there is a requirement for a fast, secure and final transfer of funds. Final being a key characteristic of a wire. They typically provide good value at the time of receipt and are known for being considerably more costly than other electronic systems. But some of that cost is due to the speed and finality, especially when working with high value or high dollar transfers. You want a little history on wires? Around the time of the telegraph being invented, Western Union, you've probably heard of them, completed the first transcontinental telegraph line in 1861. In 1879, Western Union actually left the telephone business, a move that enabled them to make money transfers their primary business. And today, wires can usually take place rather quickly, but it wasn't always that way. They actually used to be very time consuming. You see, in the past, transferring money was even more pricey than what we see today, and it required lots of time and effort. Most processes were done very manually. Now we got computers and phones to be able to do everything. If you're wanting to do a wire transfer, you could give your money to a bank or to a telegraph office and the clerk would then send a note to the recipient informing them to pay a specified amount. The bank or the telegraph office would then send the money to adjust the balances or imbalance on the other side. It really hasn't changed too much, except we've gone more electronic and more automated. Today, you go to a financial institution, you tell them to send the money to another location. The difference now is that the transfer method has evolved to be purely electronic and it's not as expensive. I don't really want to touch too much on prices. Wires can be a little pricey. The main benefits of the electronic procedures are time efficiency, completed for minutes and safety due to the money being tracked and traceable via an identification number. Wires are also able to easily and quickly, well, somewhat easily and quickly, transfer funds across international borders. But we're going to focus on domestic and payment channels here in the US for now, okay? A little more on how a wire works. The sender, payer, instructs its bank in a mutually acceptable way. In other words, they have some type of agreement in place on how the process is going to work and happen. But the sender or the payer, the business or person wanting to wire money to the beneficiary or payee, which could be another business or person. Remember, we send payment instructions and the payment channel decides what goes in those instructions. Also, how the settlement process will take place. For a wire, what's included is in the sender's instructions are the name of the beneficiary, the beneficiary's bank, and any other address details specific to that particular high value system. Another example, when using Fedwire, this would include the ABA or American Bankers Association number. That's the number of the bank being used along with the beneficiary, the person receiving the money, their account number. The sender's bank would then use its direct access to the wire system. Remember, you have to have access to all these systems to be able to use them. The sender bank would use its direct access to the wire system to instruct the beneficiary's bank to debit its account with the central bank, which could be the Federal Reserve, and credit the beneficiary because the instruction is final and irrevocable. And because the beneficiary's bank is receiving immediate value from the central bank, it provides the funds to the beneficiary virtually on an immediate basis. Right? In reality, making a high dollar or high value payment or wire is a bit more complex as there are a number of ways in which a sender can instruct its bank to make the payment or make the wire. And there's security controls that are in place. There are systems though like CHIPS, the Clearinghouse Interbank Payment System offered by, well, you guessed it, the Clearinghouse, Bedwire by the Federal Reserve. Those are two of the primary ones in the US, but there are also some independent businesses like you probably heard of Western Union, who we mentioned at the beginning, and not to mention 
well, actually literally hundreds of others that have popped up over the years that give you the ability to be able to do this. And if we want to talk international payments, oh, there are even more options. And that's where you might hear about like SWIFT. SWIFT is common to hear in the banking industry when we mention wires. And that's a society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunication. And they really appear to be dominating the worldwide market. Some people say wires seem an awful lot like real-time payments. They are close and they are similar, but they're also very different. While wires are promoted as being fast, they are not less than 10 seconds fast like a real-time payment. Wires are also much more expensive, but they're able to transfer much higher dollar values, at least currently. Wires aren't going anywhere anytime soon. They are an easy, although somewhat pricey method to be able to move very large sums of money rather quickly. And they're done one at a time. If you recall, we talked about ACH being able to be done in batch. Checks are actually bundled together and processed and sent together, whereas a wire is done one at a time. So are real-time payments. So there are some similarities, but there are some differences too. I hope you enjoyed that. If you would like to see the full series, well, it's free. It's free on our website. Just go to paymentsprofessor.com and sign up for the free course. We also have additional courses available and more are coming and in production at the moment. And we have information that's there and it's available to be able to aid you, the payments professional, in learning everything you need to know to advance your career, get that raise, maybe even that promotion, and to do so while protecting your financial institution, your fintech, your business, and your customers. If you have questions, you got comments, as always, please feel free to email me, kevin at paymentsprofessor.com.